afternoon now. It's noon here on the East Coast. Uh, welcome to Rensselaer's Fall Open House, our first open virtual open house of the year. My name is Greg Marcoon, one of the assistant directors of admission here at Rensselaer. Uh, I'm going to let everyone log in here quickly. Um, my colleague Meg Whalen is in the chat. She just sent over a welcome um, with troubleshooting. I, um, ideas if you're having any troubles with the presentation today, um, but I'll go over a couple of the troubleshooting uh, things right now. Um, if you are, we do recommend using Chrome or Firefox if you uh, are able to, as it does tend to have the most success with our webinar platform. Um, and then if you are having any issues, the, the real biggest thing is to refresh your screen. A lot of times it'll solve most of the connection issues that we are having. So again, welcome to the uh, our fall 2020 uh, virtual open house here for Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute. Uh, and our uh, vice president of enrollment management, John Wexler, would like to say a quick welcome. I hope you and your family are safe and doing well. Today, I'm in the Curtis R. Graham Experimental Greetings. Medium I'm Performing Arts Center, Vice President for MPAC, a 220,000 square foot state-of-the-art performing Jackson, arts and research facility. Students, I want to thank you for making today's open house one of the largest we've ever had at RPI. We have this students from every state and 15 countries. And everyone you everyone may know that Rensselaer is the first technology-focused university in the United States. Thus, we are the oldest as we were founded in at Rensselaer, our motto is, why not change the world? And our graduates have done just that. They've built the Brooklyn Bridge, the Ferris Wheel, Wrigley Park, Old Yankee Stadium, and Fenway Park. They've invented sunscreen, swipe card technology, the digital camera, and most importantly, Guitar Hero 3. I'm proud to say today, we are the home of the largest supercomputer at a private university in the world. This past year has been an exciting year. The year of the incoming freshman class of 2024 is currently on campus and representing the most diverse class we've ever enrolled. As you probably know already, RPI is internationally recognized as a top 50 national research university by US News and World Report. Let me give you some examples of our undergraduate programs that have been recognized nationally. Forbes just ranked RPI number 15 among STEM colleges. US News and World Report ranked our undergraduate engineering program top 29 in the country. Animation and Career Review ranked our games and simulation arts and science program number nine in the country. Design Intelligence ranked our architecture program number 14 in the country. Our information technology and web science program was ranked number one in the country by College Choice. And finally, this week, two rankings were just released. RPI has been ranked sixth for best physical science program and second for best places in the nation to study physics by College Factual. We are also excited to introduce some new majors over the past couple of years. BS in Music, BS in Business Analytics, BS in Biotechnology and Health Economics, BS in Biological Neuroscience. We have very low walls in the five schools, so these new programs are a great standalone major, so they can be very easily added to as a dual major. Return on investment in an RPI degree has never been greater. Students at Rensselaer have the opportunity to do research, internships, and co-ops at some of the most desirable locations and companies throughout the world. This has led students who graduate from RPI, logical the cutting edge of technology. We have very low roles. Parents may be interested to know that last year, our average starting salary for undergraduate entering the workforce was just over 70,000. On campus, we provide world-class facilities for world-class students. Over the past decade, Rensselaer has invested nearly a billion dollars in campus upgrades and created new learning and research opportunities rarely found at the undergraduate level. If you've not already been on campus to take a tour, I invite you to take a virtual tour and experience all this for yourself. There are a few unique opportunities I'd like to highlight that help Rensselaer students become world changers. Over 700 undergraduates participate in research at any given time, both on and off campus. We have five signature research thrusts, which allow undergrads to participate in interdisciplinary projects across 32 institutes of research centers. Additionally, we offer the co-term program that allows students to obtain a bachelor's and master's degree within five years or less. Some key points about the program are that your graduate program does not have to be in the same school as your undergrad program. For example, you can obtain a degree in engineering at the undergrad level and get a master's degree in supply chain management from our Lowry School of Management at the graduate level. No test scores are needed to get into the master's program. You can get your master's degree in one year or less. The RPI aid that you're receiving during your undergraduate years will stay with you through your co-term program. You can learn more about this program and hear from students who are currently participating in it in our session later today. So you can see it's an exciting time to be at Rensselaer. 
Before we send you off to enjoy your open house virtual event, I want to cover some changes to our admissions process and key deadlines this year. First, you should know that this year RPI is test optional. This means that students applying to RPI have the option of providing their SAT or ACT scores as part of their application process. If you submit your test scores, the admissions committee will review them. If you have not had the opportunity to take them due to COVID-19, do not worry. We have several application deadlines for the upcoming year. First, we offer two opportunities to apply early decision. The early decision one deadline is November 1st, and the early decision two deadline is December 15th. If you apply and accept via early decision, we expect you to pull back your applications to all other institutions for which you've applied. This year, we are excited to offer early action with a deadline of December 1st. Students who apply early action will have their applications reviewed and a decision made by January 30th. Unlike early decision, students that are accepted via early action have until May 1st to submit their deposit. Finally, we have regular decision where the deadline is January 15th. Students who apply regular decision find out their admissions decision on March 6th and have until May 1st to submit their enrollment deposit. We really hope we can welcome you to campus in the near future, but until then, we hope you find our sessions interactive and exciting. On behalf of the entire Rensselaer community, we hope you enjoy our virtual open house, and we hope you stay safe and sound, and we look forward to reviewing your applications. Awesome. Never uh, make sure it looks like my mic is working. Perfect. Sorry if you heard an echo there. I uh, was it hopefully all right. And that. I'm back. See um, how easy that was, and I can change slides perfectly. Me. So uh, again, welcome I'm to having our trouble call changing the house. My name is Greg Marku. I'm one of the assistant directors of admission here at Rensselaer. Um, I want to welcome you all to here on, on this beautiful Saturday afternoon here in the Capital District. We wish we could have you on campus, obviously. Uh, but I'm going to go over some logistics first before we start our academic panel. Uh, so today you have signed up for multiple sessions besides the academic panel here. Um, those links should be in that confirmation email. So right uh, when you're done this session, we will. Uh, you'll kind of X out of this link, head over to the next link, and continue through your day uh, exploring all sorts of things that we have uh, when it comes to Rensselaer. These sessions are designed to give you some very general information about the individual schools or individual things that you've signed up for in the other sessions. So we do ask that you kind of keep your questions focused on the, the, the session that you're in. Um, and, you know, if you're in the, the medical school uh, session, I wouldn't recommend asking questions about engineering, things like that. Uh, we want to make sure that we are keeping uh, these on topic. Um, throughout the session, if you have questions, feel free to throw them into the chat. It is a moderated chat. So uh, we will have people in the chat system answering questions, but if when you submit a question, it will not automatically go into the chat feature. We wanna answer one question at a time, as Meg is doing now, just to keep things um, flowing. So again, if you, if you have submitted a question and you don't see it in the chat, don't worry, we have it. Keep looking at the chat throughout the session and I will get answer that question or a, qu a question very similar as well. So as we get started here with the academic panel, um, we're going to start, I'll talk quickly about our five schools, and then I'll invite my colleagues from the individual schools to talk about their schools and what those schools have to offer. So here at Rensselaer, we have five schools, our School of Architecture, our School of Science, our Lally School of Management, which is our business school, our School of Engineering, and our School of Humanities, Arts, and Social Sciences. We also have a uh, interdisciplinary program called Information Technology and Web Sciences, which does not fit into any of the individual schools, but it is here and there, our RTWS is here to talk about their interdisciplinary program as well. So hopefully, as you can tell from this slide, they are all interconnected. So you can take courses and dual major or minor between schools. So we want you to hear from all the schools here. So as we get started here, I'd like to first invite my colleague from the School of Humanities, Arts and Social Sciences, or what we like to call Haas here, uh, into uh, the panel to, to talk, discuss Haas and all the, the great things that Haas has to offer. Uh, ben, welcome. And I will turn my video off. And just let me know when you need to switch slides. All right. Thank you, Greg. Um, let me just make sure is, uh, that my video and audio is coming through. So somebody holler if it isn't. Um, anyway, uh, my name is Ben Chang. I'm a professor in the Department of the Arts and director of the Games and Simulation Arts and Sciences program uh, in the School of Humanities, Arts and Social Sciences. So I'm delighted to be here to talk with you all today. 
Um, so the School of Humanities, Arts, and Social Sciences, um, like all of the schools, all of the academics across RPI, uh, we are really about asking questions, um, trying to understand the world, um, trying to uh, think about the natural world, the social world, um, the world of things that um, that humans create and the world of everything um, around us um, to understand it better, to think critically about it, um, and to think critically about our roles um, in creators, uh, as creators within that world. Um, in the School of Haas, um, we think about what it means to be human. So we think about uh, the, like the creation of music, how music moves us, um, how great artwork moves us, how it provokes questions. Um, we think about the mind, both human minds and machine minds and other kinds of minds. Um, we think about, uh, about the planet, about the environment. We think about society and about politics. Uh, we think about literature, um, and biotechnology. Um, all of these different aspects um, of what it means to be human um, and, uh, and to create are, are all part of what we do in the School of Haas. Um, as RPI is a technological university, many of those questions are also engaged with technology. Um, so these kinds of questions like how does, um, how does technology change us? What does it mean uh, for us to spend um, so much of our lives uh, enmeshed in and mediated through technology. Um, just a simple fact of like, how we're having this meeting here today, uh, which is now so much a part of our lives. Um, how does that like? How does that change um, uh, our, ourselves? How we think of ourselves? How we relate to others? Um, and how does all of that inform the kind of world that we want to create? Uh, we have a, a range of different uh, 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 majors in the School of Haas. Um, something that's important to know is that many of these majors um, can be done as dual majors combined with other majors in the other schools. Uh, many of these majors in these areas of study also have minors, and they also have uh, what are called Haas core requirement pathways. Um, so these are all areas of inquiry that you can pursue at various different levels of depth. I'd like to give you just a quick overview um, of, you know, of, of the majors that you see up here on the slide. Um, biotechnology and health economics. So that's looking at, uh, at this intersection, of course, between, um, between biotech and like our healthcare system, um, both what the technology is and how, how the economics of that works. Uh, cognitive science is really the study of mind. So it's the study of artificial intelligence. It's the study um, of uh, how, uh, how our minds work, um, both at a neuroscience level, um, at a psychological level, at a simulated uh, kind of a level. Communication, media, and design. So this major, uh, in this major, this is where you would work on visual communication, on graphic design, on technical writing, on all the different like, ranges of communication um, that, you know, that, that we use every day. Uh, divine design, innovation, and society. So this thinks about uh, design, the, the making of designed objects, the built, um, the built world, um, often in connection with other majors such as engineering, uh, but thinking about critically how those, um, how those things that we make, how those fit into society and impact it. Um, so economics, of course, is the study of, of the economy, is the study of money, is the study of um, economic systems um, and how all of that uh, uh, shapes our world. Um, electronic arts is an interdisciplinary major um, that includes uh, really almost all of the arts, not just the electronic ones. Um, so we do focus on things like computer animation, on digital imaging, on computer music, um, but also um, painting and drawing and sculpture and digital filmmaking um, and uh, bio art, which is the intersection between biotechnology and a fine arts practice, um, performance, uh, a whole range of, uh, of all the different arts. Games and Simulation Arts and Sciences. This is um, an inter interdisciplinary game design and development degree. So in this major, uh, you would learn how to program games, how to make art for games, how to write stories for games, compose music for games, um, and look at the impact that games have in society as this uh, in, you know, large and growing um, cultural form. Uh, the music major is one of our newest majors. Uh, so this is both um, a rigorous training in music theory, in performance, and also um, experimental and avant-garde ways of using technology uh, from computer music to electroacoustic music to virtual reality uh, for uh, creating new uh, forms of musical expression. 
uh, philosophy. Um, you might say in in some ways is, is like the oldest form of academia um, in the world. It's it's the overarching questions: um, why is anything, um, and like what is like what are the what is the nature of things? Uh, psychological science. Uh, so this is the study of psychology. Um, uh, as a you know, as, as a form, um, as a form of science, the quantitative analysis um, and analytics um, of uh, psychological behavior, science and technology, and society um, studies, uh, as the name suggests, the interaction between science and technology um, and the societies in which they emerge, and how societies shape the evolution of science and technology, and how science and technology shapes the evolution of society. And then finally, sustainability studies looks at sustainability, um, both in, uh, in, in local and in global um, kind of senses, uh, to try to make sense of this changing planet. Okay. Um, Overall, what we're doing in the School of Haas is exploring these crossroads of technology and culture. Um, something I uh, want to mention is that there is a Haas core requirement for all majors. So um, whether you take one of these as a, as a, as a major or a dual major um, or not, um, you will take classes in the School of Haas through something called the Haas core pathways. So this is a, um, a set of required credits. Um, in one of a range of different um, areas of study, some of which are within these majors, and some of which are interdisciplinary and cross across, uh, cut across a number of these different um, these different majors. Um, let's go ahead to the next slide, so I can um, talk a little bit about the kinds of careers and pathways that people have after they come out of the School of Haas. Uh, so. Some kinds of places they go to work at major animation studios, at video game studios, um, in the entertainment industry, in the music industry. Um, so our graduates go on to work in graphic design, in website design, um, interface design, um, what's called UI and UX, user interface and user experience. Um, they go on to be technical directors in TV and film, work in advertising and marketing. Um, they work for environmental nonprofits and they also go on and do research. So they may go on and do cutting edge foundational artificial intelligence research, go on to graduate school and um, do research in, in many of these different areas. Um, and then lastly, many of our students also uh, are, are entrepreneurs. So they take the things that they learn in the School of Haas and then combine them with what they would learn um, in um, in the Lally School um, and elsewhere, and they form startup companies. Um, at the program that I'm in, in the, the Games and Simulation Arts and Sciences program, this means uh, becoming indie game developers or uh, starting companies working um, working in games. Uh, but this sort of um, way of taking what you learn um, in the humanities and the arts and social sciences and wrapping that into many different kinds of careers is I think um, a, a kind of a hallmark of this school. Um, all right, I think uh, I'll pause it there because I know we have a lot of content to get through um, and I look forward to hearing any questions you have as we go through the rest of the program. Awesome, Ben, thank you so much. Uh, so that's a little bit about Haas. Next, we're gonna talk about our School of Engineering. So I'd like to invite my colleague uh, from the School of Engineering, uh, Marie Deffenbach, who is the director of our School of Engineering Advising. And I'm here, awesome. <laughs> thank you, Greg, uh, I'm, I'm here. Welcome to everyone. I'm very glad you're all joining us today. It's As Greg said, it's a gorgeous fall day in upstate New York. The foliage is spectacular this year, and I wish we could all be on campus enjoying that together. As Greg said, my name is Marie Diefenbach and I am in charge of the School of Engineering First Year Academic Advising Hub. I've been advising RPI engineers for the past 18 years and I really love my job. Um, I have a staff of four incredibly dedicated professionals who work with me and every day we come to work at RPI with the purpose of really improving the lives of our students. When students come to RPI as engineers, they are assigned two academic advisors. They're assigned a School of Engineering hub advisor, and they're assigned a faculty advisor. Um, and the hub advisors specialize in certain majors, and Greg's very kindly putting up our majors here. And their faculty advisor will be a faculty member in one of those departments in their academic major. So for the first year, their hub advisor will advise them on um, assisting them to clarify their academic goals, assisting them in choosing um, any kinds of dual majors as Ben spoke about, or minors as appropriate. 
um, will assist them in crafting their four-year academic plan. Then after the first year, they're transitioned to their faculty advisor in their department, and they'll assist with kind of higher order advising, uh, questions about career, grad schools, upper level technical electives, um, and they will be with that faculty advisor for the remainder of the three years at RPI. And as you can see in the slide here, uh, we offer 11 different engineering majors. We offer a hands-on, multidisciplinary, uh, immersive education that's innovative, and we're one of the highest ranked uh, education engineering schools in the country. And all of that is really good stuff. Um, you can go to the School of Engineering website and learn more details about that. You can go to School of Engineering YouTube, and we have tons of videos about our research, student profiles. There's tons of information there. Even our admissions website has a ton of great information there. And you can get all of those particulars and statistics. I don't want to just repeat any of that. Um, I was thinking this week about what I wanted to talk about today. And as I've been meeting with my first year um, advisees throughout the week, um, and right now we're meeting with those students, our freshman students, to help them prepare for registration for the spring semester, which is coming up in a couple of weeks, believe it or not. And so I've, as I've been meeting with these students, I've thought about what I want to talk about, uh, what the life of being an engineering student here is at RPI. And when I met with one of my advisees, um, she said something that was very powerful that really resonated with me that I wanted to share with you. Um, when I meet with my advisees, first thing I ask, especially this time of year, how are things going? How are your classes? How are you adjusting to life as a college student here at RPI? I just want to kind of find out, are they happy? And she just looked right in the camera because, of course, we're meeting like in this format, right? I can't have them across the desk from me right now. And she looked right in the camera and she said to me, I've found my people. And I thought that was very, very powerful. And she went on to explain that the things that she might have been kind of made fun of for in high school and maybe mocked a little bit, the interest that she had, um, they're celebrated here at RPI. And she's found a whole bunch of other students with similar interests. Um, and she has really been able to connect with them and, and celebrate and enjoy all those interests that she has and all of those passions. She has found her people. And so it kind of started me thinking about when I first started working at RPI about 18 years ago, it was a Friday night, I was leaving work after a long week, and I was cutting through, we have a loading dock in the, in the big engineering building on campus. And I was cutting through to go home, and um, it was Friday night, as I said, and there's a couple of guys, students, um, dumpster diving in these big boxes that we have on the loading dock with um, kind of discarded computer equipment, lab equipment that is obsolete that we're getting rid of. And I said, why aren't you guys out having fun? What are you doing? And they said, we are having fun. We actually decided that we wanted to rig this kind of complicated system that would be like a doorbell video notification that hooks up to our laptop so that we know when one of our friends is at the door. And I just remember thinking, these guys have found their people. I am definitely at an engineering school and I'm not in Kansas anymore if this is what is fun on a Friday night. So if you come here, you'll find your people. Um, so next slide, Greg. Um, next, um, where do you go from here? Basically, you can see on this slide, you go anywhere you want. The top grad schools, the top companies, as you see here, making a very good salary. Again, all of these statistics are available on all our websites. This week, I had the pleasure of interviewing a recent alum of one of our engineering programs, a former advisee of mine who I have stayed in close contact with over the years. She graduated in 2014. She left RPI with a mechanical engineering undergraduate degree, and she went to work in GE in manufacturing. After two years of really good performance at GE and saving them a bunch of money, she was aggressively recruited by Apple, uh, SpaceX, and Tesla. And she ended up at Tesla, and she's been there for the past four years. She comes back to campus every couple of years and talks to our students about manufacturing and about her career and about her time here. And this week I asked her to think back of what she did at RPI um, and how that has really informed what she has done in her career since. 
And she talked about a one credit lab class that our first year engineering students take that many of them are taking right now. It's a class called Engineering Processes, um, where you go into um, the lab in the basement of the engineering building um, and you work with all these machines. It's a completely hands-on course um, and you get to make a little metal uh, locomotive or a little metal cannon. Um, and I can tell you that we have faculty who graduated from RPI years and years ago, and they still have those things in their office. That's a very powerful kind of totem in our engineering uh, school, in our engineering world. Anyway, that one credit class that she took as a first year student really got her interest peaked in the manufacturing process. She went on to select electives in manufacturing specifically within mechanical engineering. She took in more and more electives and she really discovered that that was the passion of her life. And I asked her now, you know, how does she talk to students about what manufacturing engineers do? And she said, the thing that she loves most about it is it allows her to be creative in order to constantly improve things to make the world a better place. So here's my pitch to all of you um, who are interested in engineering, all you engineers out there, come to RPI, find your people, discover your passion, and then go on to make the world a better place. We need you now more than ever. So I'm gonna be hanging around for questions um, and I'll turn it back to Greg. Thanks. Thank you, Marie, that was wonderful. Uh, in my role in the admissions office, I am the liaison with the School of Engineering, so I work very close with Marie and all the all my colleagues there. So uh, it's always great to, to have her on one of these panels. Uh, at the, this point, I would pass. I'm going to pass it off to our uh, Lally School of Management, and this time I promise I will change the slide before we start talking about the school. Uh, I apologize there, so I'm going to invite uh, Clint on. So Clint, thank you so much, and it's all you. Thank you, thank you. Hopefully, you can hear me. Um, so yeah, this is the first time I'm actually doing one of these open houses. I'm new at this job that I have. I'm the director of the undergrad program in the business school. It's called the Lally School of, of Management. Um, I've been at this job for a month and a half. I absolutely love it. Um, and uh, you know, echoing what other people said today, it's, it is a, an absolute beautiful day outside. The leaves are changing. Every time, you know, every time, like this time of year rolls around, <clears throat> every single time I think back in my college days, and believe it or not, even though I'm a 55 year old man, I still remember like the feeling I had going on campus, going to college, the freedom that you have, just the smell of the leaves and things like that. It's uh, it's great. I, I envy you. You guys, uh, you have a great, fantastic uh, experience awaiting you. Um, I remember thinking about college, getting so excited about it, wondering what it's gonna be like and all that, but also stressing a lot about what I was gonna be. and you know, what degree should I get? And did I choose correctly? Oh my God, if I don't choose correctly, what's gonna happen? It'd be a total waste. No, not at all, not at all. I have a PhD in nuclear engineering. PhD in nuclear engineering. I used it, I had a great time. I worked on Star Wars projects at Lawrence Livermore National Lab. I worked on designing nuclear subs at Knowles Atomic Power Lab. Absolutely love the science. I love the science so much. I got a PhD in this stuff, right? So loved it, loved it, loved it. You can't go wrong with, with getting a, a, an engineering degree at all, any scientific degree, any degree. The key is you're not tied to that degree. You're not, you're not gonna be that forever. It turns out with me, I was, I was working at Lockheed Martin for 10 years, loving it, absolutely loving it. After about eight years, I started not to love it. I was working in a cubicle. I didn't, I didn't see much of a future for myself. Certainly there were ways to move up and all that, but I just, I didn't have the desire to. I was looking at my four cubicle walls and thinking, is there, is there something else I could do? And it turns out I did. I started my own company, um, which was crazy. I started my company with two other clowns from RPI that had just graduated. I quit, I had a minivan payment, a wife, kids, a dog, a mortgage, all these kind of things. I knew nothing about business. I was a nuclear engineer. I quit my day job and I started a company. And man, I have no regrets at all. It was the most fantastic thing. That's how I became a businessman. That's how I'm the director of the undergrad program at RPI for, for the Lally Business School. Because I've, I've been studying business for the last 20 years. I've had three startup companies. It's been fantastic. So I don't want you to think that you're defined by your career or defined by your, um, by your degree. It doesn't, it doesn't have to happen that way. What is super cool for you guys though is 
you're going to get a degree from such a great university. You have all that prestige. I mean, you're, you are on the shoulders of giants that have come before you for hundreds of years. So you have all that to build upon. So you guys are in great shape. It doesn't matter what, what degree you get from this place. One of the things looking back at my college though, dang, I wish I had taken a couple management classes at least because I was reading, I was reading about management classes online and things like that when I started my first company. If I had taken a few classes, they would have demystified things. They would have made things a lot easier. I wouldn't have made nearly the mistakes that I made um, as I was going through my startup company. So I would encourage you guys to take some management classes, even though if it's not, if it's not your major, it doesn't matter. You can get it, you can choose a minor in it. You can just dabble with some classes in it. I tell you what, if you ever want to move up, if you want to, you know, go to work for Lockheed Martin and you want to do that for your career and you want to do it forever, that's fantastic. Good for you. I hope it works out great. You know what though? You might move up faster if you had a few management classes under your belt. Now's the time to do it. So try to see if you got time in your curriculum, in your schedule to uh to stick your feet in the water with some some of the classes in the business school. We're actually very fortunate. I'm so happy that that I'm at RPI because what a what a great thing. So this this fantastic technology university has been around for a hundred years, hundreds of years, you know, and and we we have a business school attached to it. I feel very fortunate that I'm in my position. So uh, I open it up to you guys to uh, to take take some of our classes, just dabble with it, even though even if you don't want to be a business major. But if you do want to be a business major, which I also encourage, we have a couple of uh, a couple of degree programs. So you can get a BS in uh, business and management. That's that's more of the traditional role. And we have a brand new one. It's a BS in business analytics. Brand new program started last year. To me, it's sort of a crossroads of STEM and business. If if this degree had been available when I was when I was your age, I might do it. Like I, I mean, because it's it's both business and really technical stuff. You got to be you got to learn how to program. You got to have good math skills, good analytic skills. So it's basically you know putting your putting your uh, STEM brain to work on business problems, which is really cool. Um, so those are our two undergrad programs. Of course, it's all accredited, all that kind of stuff. Um, also. As was mentioned before, you can get a co-term degree. A co-term degree is you spend an extra year and you can get a master's degree in business. You spend an extra three semesters, you can get an MBA. So it's not a it's not a bad deal. And you can you can get right into the programs without any testing or things like that. So you you would come out with uh, with a graduate degree after spending basically either either two semesters or three semesters here. Um, if you're a business major, then we have concentrations. You could, you could have a concentration in entrepreneurship, supply chain management, marketing, finance, uh, information systems, and, the, and our brand new one of sports management. Um, so we got all these, all these different, uh, with a couple different majors, and then a couple different concentrations within those. And like I said, you can stick around uh, for a graduate level degree as well. Um, next slide. And those co-term degrees, that's for uh, that's for any major. You don't have to be a business major. You could be an engineer and then do a, a co-term degree or science major, or any, any Haas major. Um, so the school we have we have modern programs. Uh, we we really we've really been revamping our schedule or our curriculum all all the time, turning it over to keep keep pace, make sure that everything is relevant. We're training the few the the, uh, the leaders of the future. Um, our our students graduate with with really good salaries, um, greater than seventy one thousand dollars a year. Um, they get signing bonuses, things like that. So we have we have a very successful alumni network. Also, um, in fact, when I teach classes, I try to bring as many as many alums and uh, other relevant folks into class as as possible. Like uh, the uh, the VP originally was talking about how we had a uh, one of the RPI grads uh, graduate graduated and invented the digital camera. Well, he comes into my class every 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 year, so it's pretty cool. Um, well, you got a well-respected business degree, well-rounded. I think that when our when our students graduate with a business degree from the Lally School here at RPI, they're 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 treated a little different than regular business school students because people know that they have more of a technology background. It's just sort of woven into all of our pro our all of our uh, programs. So you're gonna you're gonna have that if you if you graduate uh, from from the uh, from the business school uh, or like likewise even if you take some uh, some classes and make it into a minor or things like that. Uh, 
So there's some uh, there's a little uh, little snapshot of some recent uh, recent where recent grads went: Raytheon, SpaceX, Tesla, Deloitte. We send a lot of people to things like that: um, Amazon, IBM, etc. So we have a good program. It's cool. I feel fortunate that we have this business school attached to uh, to RPI, which is fantastic. We try to integrate as much as we can with the other schools, make it so that it's easy for you to dabble with it. Get a little more interested in it, take a minor in it, get a double major, you get all kinds of different things. So many different ways to uh, to stick your foot in the water with the business. But I also encourage you to, to think about using it as a, as a major as well. So that's all I have. Awesome. Thank you so much, Clint. Um, now we're going to welcome in my colleague, uh, our dean of the School of Architecture, to talk next about his school. Uh, a couple notes here. Again, guys, we're trying to get to as many questions as you can, so please do not double send questions. We have your questions, I promise. We will get to as many as we can. We've already received well over 100 questions, and Meg and I are working through them as fast as possible. So if you could just send your question once so you're not clogging and backlogging the chat so we can get to as many questions as you can, that would be great. Also, you may have asked a similar question to somebody else so we probably have answered if we if we don't answer your question specifically keep looking in the chat we may have answered a similar question already so uh, after those little logistics things uh, Dean Douglas uh, it will leave it up to you to talk about architecture you sound wonderful Thank you, Dean Douglas. And again, I apologize for the spotty audio there. Um, we're definitely gonna gonna work on that uh, for the question and answer session. Uh, but next, I'd like to uh, invite my school of science uh, rep on where it looks like he's outside Hi. in beautiful upstate New York, um, ready to show you what upstate New York looks like. So I will thanks, Greg. You can off. hear me okay? I yeah, I, I by the the green bar, I can see that. Hi, everyone. My name is Chad Christensen. I am the Director of Student Services for the School of Science. Uh, all of my colleagues has, has commented on how beautiful uh, today is. I figured I'd actually show you uh, what a beautiful fall day uh, in upstate New York looks like. Uh, the reality is I have two young children uh, in my house. And no matter if I locked myself in a barricaded room, uh, you would eventually hear crying and screaming. So I figured I would join outside and, and just be me in the, in the leaves. So. Uh, we'll be doing my, my presentation from outside today. Uh, it's really great to see you. I really wish that we were on campus. It, it's these fall events, uh, you know, getting to meet, you know, high school seniors, high school juniors uh, and, and who are interested in, in RPI. It's, it's a really exciting time, uh, like many of my colleagues have mentioned. Uh, and so we really, really hope uh, that you will join us. Uh, people often ask what my favorite part of my job is. Uh, and I always say it's the students. Um, you know, I've worked at a couple other universities, uh, but to, to work at RPI, you know, when you say, oh, hey, I, my students are working to solve cancer, they're solving the you know, latest cybersecurity problems, uh, they're currently trying to cure COVID-19, uh, it's not hyperbole. Uh, these are projects our students are actually working on uh, every single day. Uh, and and you'll come to learn that science is a whole bunch of little projects that lead to one big result. Um, so you may only solve one molecule in this drug trial that leads to this, but your contribution um, to that project could one day cure cancer, cure COVID. Uh, and to me, that is it's an amazing thing to think about and think about the opportunities that you have available in front of you uh, it, it really is an exciting time uh, to come to RPI. So really hope that we will see you. I'm here representing the School of Science today. We have lots and lots of majors. There's too many for me to kind of go through individually. Um, I can give, I'll give you the broad strokes on all of them and certainly during question and answer, if you have further questions you can ask. So we have six departments in the School of Science. Uh, we have physics, biology, chemistry, computer science, uh, earth and environmental science, 
mathematics uh, and mathematics. Uh, we do have one program, uh, interdisciplinary studies. Uh, it's basically a combination of, of those six departments that's run through uh, my office uh, and the dean's office uh, in the School of Science. Um, and so those are our, our major programs. Um, you know, as a, our newest programs actually are in computational biology. That is a, a, a new program that just started this past, uh, this current fall, so fall 2020. Uh, it's, it's the combination of computer science with some biology. Uh, we used to call it bioinformatics, uh, but the newer term and, and the more appropriate term now is sort of computational biology. Uh, and you really see that in a lot of our, uh, our programs is that we have a really, high, uh, anal you know, um, working on analysis, uh, data sets, um, computation. Uh, a lot of our mathematicians are computational mathematicians or applied mathematicians. Um, we're really trying to solve um, new age problems uh, and you really get that exposure um, throughout. So what's really nice about science is that as an incoming science student, um, you don't always have to choose right away. Uh, you know, Clint, I really uh, appreciated what Clint was saying was, you know, deciding your major right away does not have to dictate your future career. And for example, uh, in two, uh, last year, I actually did a study of this. I, I took a couple years, we figured out how often do our students change major? You know, we really didn't know. So we found out depending on the class year, somewhere between 35 and 40% of our students in science um, actually changed their major to something else. So they started as an incoming student with this and they graduated with some different degree. Um, so it really comes to show you that a lot of students really do change their major um, and, and change their, um, what they're interested in, you know? And so we really, want students just to come to RPI, start taking science classes, um, you know, get it. The way I look at science and, and the best way that we prepare students is we kind of have two different tracks. So if you're interested in mathematics, physics, computer science, there's, you know, a couple courses, right? In the, your first semester, you would take computer science one, you would take calculus one, uh, and you take physics one. If you're interested in biology, chemistry, environmental science, um, those kinds of programs, you would then take um, biology one, chemistry one, and also calculus one. And it really, uh, you know, leaves it so that um, you have different avenues that you can switch to depending on your interests um, as you come forward. So that's a really, really interesting thing. One uh, special program we have uh, in the School of Science is our Physician Science program. Um, so I do get this question all the time. We do not have a medical school at RPI. Uh, we partner with the uh, with a local medical school, Albany Medical College, uh, and students do three years at RPI. Um, you would follow a standard biology curriculum for the three years, and then you do your four years at medical school. And what we do is we transfer in the courses from your first year at medical school back to RPI thus giving you a bachelor's in biology. And then you would finish your, your, um, your next three years at Albany Medical College and get a medicine degree. Um, and really, it's a, it's a really unique program uh, and certainly contact our admissions about it because I do think it requires some special applications and, and things like that. Um, so certainly, certainly do that. Um, a lot of rankings. Um, I actually think I see them uh, 2018. Uh, I actually think 2019, uh, we also were rated number six in physics. Um, many of our programs are, are highly, highly rated. Um, and our students really, really do enjoy them. Actually, if you go to the next slide for me, Greg. Thank you. Uh, you one, you can see you know, how amazing uh, and all the sort of different amazing places our students go. Um, you know, you'll see a lot of overlap between the schools and, and where, our, um, where our students end up. And a lot of that is the dual major and, and sort of that feasibility to do multiple programs um, during your time uh, really allows you to be a well-rounded student. Um, one thing when I was, I did, I did a little research on our students, 
most student most people think that the most common dual major in science uh, is engineering, and that's actually not true. The most common major uh, dual major is in Haas. Um, as as uh, Dr. Chang was saying earlier, um, a lot of their programs are are uh, easily dual major, um, uh, sort of blend well with that. Um, so you do see a lot of that overlap. Two things that I want to highlight before, before I, I know you guys have you know been listening to us talk. Uh, the starting salaries for our um, for our majors, you know, are really high. There's a really broad range, as you can imagine. School science, you know, we have everything from lab techs, um, you know, research lab positions, you know, up to you know, I've seen job offers, hundred and ten, hundred and twenty thousand dollars for uh, computer science students. So that the seventy five thousand median salary is a pretty big range, just because of the different programs. Um, you know, but they're certainly all really great um, starting salaries. One thing I find is interesting is that the vast majority of our students complete either research uh, during their time at RPI or do an internship or co-op. Uh, and one thing to note is that these numbers, uh, most of them happen before the ARCH program. Uh, we are going into year three of the full-time ARCH program. So many of our students who've gone through the very first program are just starting to graduate. So some of these numbers actually should increase over time uh, with the development of the ARCH program and, and sort of having more opportunities for internships and co-ops. Um, so I think that. And then research. Uh, research is a huge thing for our students. Um, we call it the, it's called a URP, uh, which is, stands for Undergraduate Research Program. And many of our students complete these. Uh, and the way it works is you actually would join uh, a research group with a, uh, led by a faculty member. Uh, and you would sort of, as I mentioned at the top, you'd work on some small portion of a project, of a larger project that that faculty member is in charge of. So it's a really great opportunity to see what, what faculty are working on, um, what companies are working on. We do a lot of uh, you know, research with IBM and sort of the, the more computer science things. So there's a lot of Really great opportunities for that. Um, so I'm going to see the rest of my time. Uh, I believe uh, Dr. Plotka is going to speak to you about our ITWS program uh, and all the great opportunities that has to offer. Um, so we appreciate that, and we look forward to seeing you at the Q&A. Awesome. Thanks, Chad. I, I feel your pain. I actually, I kicked my two-year-old out of the house, um, so she's roaming around the neighborhood somewhere uh, with, with, with mom. So uh, <laughs> I understand the pain of, of the of the young child interrupting the presentation. But at this point, again, I would like to welcome in our representative for ITWS, and, um, and we can get his input on um, this unique interdisciplinary program that we do have to offer. Can you hear me? I sure can. You sound great. Wonderful. Great. Uh, thanks a lot, Greg. Thanks, everybody. So welcome, everybody. Uh, it's a real pleasure to see you all virtually. I uh, wish we could do it in person. Uh, so I'm Professor Plotka. I'm the director of the Information Technology Web Science Program. It's an interdis interdisciplinary program that sits uh, outside. It's administrated in the School of Science, but it sits outside all of the others and uh, contains content from all of the different schools. So we work very closely with all of the different uh, groups. As was mentioned, we're the number one uh, rated, the number one program in the country in information technology and web science. So information technology being the uh, management and running of uh, in, in IT infrastructure within companies, and then the web science being a lot of data analytics, data science, uh, cybersecurity, and things along those lines. Um, we have a lot of students that go on into machine learning, artificial intelligence, various different areas. One of our students left uh, about three years ago in the five-year program, got his master's in data analytics, along with uh, dual in computer science and uh, ITWS, and redesigned Apple's machine learning algorithms and created a foundation that all of their machine learning works on now, and he runs that program for Apple, uh, and he's just three years in. Uh, so we'll talk about a couple of other students. Uh, we're very uh, cross-cultural, uh, very uh, uh, interested in women uh, in technology. We work closely with computer science and ACMW. We send students over to Grace Hopper every year. And uh, three students that I'm particularly proud of, three each a year apart from each other up until last year, last three or four years, 
have gone to Microsoft and each one is already a product manager, one for Edge, one for Azure, and one for the terminal and uh, uh, the new developer tools that uh, 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 Microsoft is running. And they're all very public. They're all doing a lot of things and doing great things at those companies. In the program, you will uh, get to see a bunch of technology. You'll get to see a bunch of business. You'll uh, I, you wear your propeller head with a hat, uh, with a suit. So we uh, wear the suits, we understand the technology, we can understand and read a balance sheet, we can do a cost benefit analysis, we can do a return on investment calculation, but at the same time, we can design an algorithm for solving some sort of real problem. We can apply our engineering skills, our uh, scientific skills to a real world problem to solve some concern. Uh, hence, all of our students going forward. Uh, for example, the one student that's the product manager at Edge right out of school went and proposed to Microsoft, the technology steering committee, that they change the engine of the browser to Chrome, to the uh, Chrome engine rather than the old Internet Explorer and the original Edge engine. So our students, uh, all at RPI, not just in ITWS, but our students identify a problem, find a solution and go for it. Uh, and that's one of the great things about our program. I actually started at RPI. I graduated many years ago before there was an ITWS, before there was an internet, quite frankly, uh, for a public internet anyway. And uh, electrical engineering, computer science, uh, and as was mentioned earlier on, I did not start, uh, Clint mentioned, I, I also did not start in business. I figured for sure I would be a scientist my entire career. I went to Grumman. I was a radar design engineer, so did physics, and uh, then moved into business, had a consulting company, started a couple of companies, sold them, uh, and now I teach uh, full-time here. I started with this program 20 years ago at its inception. It was started by a previous uh, vice president of AT&T who was responsible for laying fiber, also an RPI grad, by the way, Greg Hughes, who was uh, responsible for laying fiber across most of the world uh, at AT&T. And he started the program and I advised to that program for years and then came on board to start teaching about 10 years ago. Uh, uh, next slide, please. And so uh, some of the specifics uh, of our reporting seniors, 100% placement for seven years prior. We had 87% placement last year with the COVID uh, situation. Our average starting salary was $85,000 last year. A lot, the year before, it was $97,000. Our highest reported salary this year was 110,000, 140,000 all time. So our students are getting great placement all over the place. Uh, Facebook, Deloitte, Apple, CIA, NSA, pick your three letter acronym companies, Google, Microsoft, and so on. So the students are very in demand. You'll find that many of our students have done three or four different internships at many of these different companies and others uh, and get a uh, pick of the litter as far as opportunities. The uh, many go on to grad school. We have a very uh, robust uh, graduation program, a graduate program where you can uh, do a five year master's in, or dual. Uh, you can do a dual with other schools. You can also do a master's in uh, cybersecurity, information technology, what have you. And we can tie a lot of these things together. Uh, one of the things I wanted to talk about are the things that we do as, an, uh, as a program that sometimes are a little different, but certainly what we're doing different with COVID and keeping people engaged. So uh, all of our classes are taught uh, live, online in, and in person. So the folks that are on campus get taught live, the folks that are remote attend live. Uh, we have interactive sessions. We have bi-weekly meeting WebExes that are uh, come as you wish uh, meetings to, with the entire graduate and undergraduate student body, as well as the administrators and various faculty to come in and talk to you to see how things are going, just to touch base. We've uh, launched this past year a Discord channel that is primarily student organized and run. It's overseen by myself and uh, one of the folks on, in our cybersecurity area that works uh, for us in the IT program. And uh, we have active sessions, tutoring sessions there. We have the Gamma Nu Eta uh, National Honor Society for Information Technology, which was actually founded at RPI. And, uh, they have mentoring and tutoring sessions on a regular basis. And so we're in constant communication with all of our uh, students. We uh, um, meet with them regularly, as I said. We also have a very robust 
uh, alumni network. We keep in touch with all of our alums. They come in and talk to uh, you as students. We do seminars, we do little programs. We're doing a lot more of them now that we've got online capabilities. And we, uh, we actually have had students go to jobs and then find other opportunities using the LinkedIn network from our alumni by keeping in communication with folks from various years and various uh, areas and uh, generations of the program, as it were. We're in our 21st year, I think now, or 22nd year. And so it's pretty robust and the uh, network is pretty uh, extreme. We're represented all over the world. We've got folks in on every continent other than Antarctica. Although, no, actually that's not true. Antarctica, we are represented this past year. So we've got students there as well. Uh, so I welcome questions. We're really excited. We're really excited about the program. Love to have you in it. It's growing uh, greatly. It's a great place to be, and it gets, lets you touch anything you love and focus in, but then apply it to real world and be relevant quickly and uh, hit the ground running, as you can see from our performance numbers. So with that, I'll turn it back over and let things go forward. But thank you very much. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. If you want to stay on as well, I'd like to invite all of um, my colleagues back or, or um, here uh, into the panel. Um, as everyone gets in, a uh, couple, couple again, housekeeping notes. We received hundreds of questions. Um, and again, we've, we've answered as many as we can. We will keep answering them in the chat as well as over the um, over here as the panel starts to come in. Um, so again, we weren't able to get to every single question. But again, um, we're going to try our best. And again, many of the questions that you're asked, that you've asked, will be answered in the, in the other session. If you know about the medical program, there's a medical uh, session that will happen uh, later today. So again, keep that in mind as well, that your questions may be answered later in the day. Again, we've received you know, hundreds of questions so far. Meg and I are doing our, doing our darndest to get through as many as we can. But I'm going to ask a lot of general questions here. Um, and again, before we keep going, ask questions, um, this is our follow us page. Um, we are very active, especially on the Instagram page. Um, all of these sessions today and, and that we've done in the past are recorded and put on the RPI admissions YouTube page. So we do recommend if you've missed something or you want to uh, check out a session that's been previously done, um, do that as well. We're also offering a ton of sessions, major uh, and school specific, uh, as we move forward here into the end of October and into November. So keep those out, uh, keep your eyes and ears out for those as well. So I'll start here. Uh, I've got a lot of questions, kind of about the distribution of students uh, on campus. Um, you know, how many students are in the School of Engineering? How many students are in the School of Architecture? Um, so if you could each kind of go through uh, and kind of give me an idea of, of who, how many students uh, are in your major? And we'll start with, uh, with Richard here first, because he's the first one on my left. Okay, so we've got about, uh, we had about uh, 40 in incoming and uh, transfer over freshmen in our, uh, this year, 40% women actually, I'm very pleased to say. And uh, we have about uh, 300 in the undergraduate program. Uh, um, I think generally in School yeah. of Engineering, yeah, Greg, I think we have anywhere between like, I want to say 850 and 1,000 incoming freshmen. Does that sound about right to you? Yeah, yeah, we probably, I think the School of Engineering is about 50% of the school overall. Um, so I think that that kind of gives you an idea. We're about 62 oh, undergrads, just about half are going to be freshman class. Sorry, yeah. I know. We, we, have, we have thousands of students. Yeah, yeah, and for, and for the class. And for the uh, and for uh, um, the last year, the engineering class of 2019 was the first class year that we had uh, under 50 percent engineering students coming in. So we are not just an engineering school. Uh, Clint, you're next. Uh, yeah, we have about 70 incoming freshmen, I'd say, per year, uh, over 200 students all in in the undergrad program. Um, but also we we like. Uh, a lot of a lot of other majors and things come through us as well. Those are just the ones that have majors, you know. Uh, but other people from other majors get minors and uh, and all that kind of dabble with different classes, uh, maybe do some code terms, things like that. So it's uh, we serve a broad broad audience. Absolutely, Ben. Um, so as far as majors, the only one I have numbers on the top of my head for is my own major, which is the games and simulation arts and sciences one. So we get about uh, about forty to fifty each year uh, incoming. Um, that's it, it, or you know thirty five up to forty to fifty. Um, about uh, getting up to about two hundred total um, undergrads in that major right now. Um, and 
uh, I don't have the number for all of the school of uh, the school of Haas uh, myself. Um, like with like with the Lally School, uh, the answer is also everyone because all, all students at RPI will come through uh, the school of Haas and take classes there. Perfect, Dean Douglas. Yeah, yeah, you're you're pretty good right now. Awesome. And Chad. Hi. Yeah, we're uh, we're uh, gaining on on uh, engineering very very quickly here. Uh, we have we had 660 uh, this past year. We usually average about that 600, a little bit over mark uh, for incoming freshmen. Uh, we have about 2,500 um, all said and done. Uh, many of our majors actually increase over time instead of decrease with the dual majors. Um, so we have about 2,500. And also the School of Science does hold our largest program, which is the, the computer science program as well. So uh, they yeah. have that as well. That's actually So if you take those numbers uh, and divide it in half, that's what you get for computer science. Uh, they have about 1,200 students. They get about 300 coming every year. Awesome. Wonderful. Uh, and then I've seen a lot of the questions about dual majoring a, as well. Um, and so this this one does uh, RPI offer dual major for engineering and computer science. So that's the question. But generally, I'd like to talk about dual majoring. I, I know Ben, I know Clint have talked about dual majoring with their particular programs. Uh, Marie, as an sure. advisor, I don't know if you want to sure, start with this one. Um, that would we have be a lot a, of dual majors that are quite popular in the School of Engineering. Our most popular is probably aero and mechanical. It's pretty um, easy to accomplish in, in eight semesters. Um, I think when, when we're talking to for, particularly first year students, I like the dual majors to make sense. You know, like, you know, I don't think you want to come to RPI and just collect all these majors and minors and things just for the sake of saying I have a lot of majors and minors, you know. Um, you know, we kind of like talk to students about what are your goals? What are your passions? You know, what are you trying to accomplish with these combinations? Because sometimes there's kind of weird combinations, I've got to be honest with you. And then sometimes when you delve into it, they do, you know, a student might want to be a nuclear and arrow because they want to do deep space exploration and look at nuclear fuel for, you know, rockets that go into deep space. Okay, that makes a nuclear and arrow one makes sense, you know. Um, so I guess, you know, students always like to ask about duels um, and they want to get the most bang for their educational buck. And I totally get that. But, you know, I kind of like it when they make some sense and that you can talk to a prospective employer and it, you can tell some, you can tell a narrative, you know, why did I combine these interests, you know, because in some sense you could run the risk potentially of an employer saying to you, you're kind of all over the place here, you know, you might be kind of diluting these things, you know, so, it, you know, I think if students have thoughtful discussions with their academic advisors um, and with their faculty members, um, and sometimes even with upper class students about why they're doing particular duels, I like to see those conversations happen. Um, but there's tons of opportunities and our students duel with all the majors, all the different schools represented here on this call. So there's a lot of low walls at RPI, I believe as, as your boss explained earlier. Um, and so, um, you know, students can pursue different interests and they're not locked into a particular school, a particular curriculum. They have that opportunity here absolutely to explore all the different aspects of themselves. Anyone have anyone, yeah, anything else to add? Yeah, I, I just want to uh, sort of go off what, what Marie was saying. Uh, I like the idea about making sense, um, especially, you know, you have a finite amount of time at RPI uh, and amount of energy and credits. And sometimes there might be other ways that you don't think of, right? You might be better off working on an undergraduate research project. You might be better off uh, working with the Lally School and the Entrepreneur Center on some other idea that you have. Uh, and so it's not always just to write about collecting majors. There's a lot of uh, extracurricular experiences that can bolster your uh, resume at RPI.
Awesome. Wonderful. Uh, the next question, uh, I think I got, I got a lot of questions about this, but is the class size. So I don't know if, uh, again, if you may want to go through and, and talk each about your individual class sizes for your different programs. So again, we'll start with, with Richard here because he's the first one on my screen. Okay, so class sizes are generally uh, 30 or so per at least recitation. We have some that are 60 or more, or a larger in a lecture and then a recitation setting. But when we get to the recitation settings, they're generally about 30 or so to, uh, to the instructor. They're all taught by instructors. They're not taught directly by TAs. TAs might oversee or contribute to some of the help with the grading and the extra help and what have you. Uh, but we uh, have faculty adjunct and also uh, full-time faculty that teach uh, all of our programs. Um, so it's very individualized. We, because of the size of our school and because of the way we run it like a family, we know all of our students by face and name. We're in touch with them years after they graduate. Uh, so it's uh, very closely known and you'll you'll be known you can't hide which is good and bad um maybe but uh we know all of you yeah and that's i think he had a good point there it was another question i was going to get to later is about who teaches the classes all of our classes are 100 percent faculty taught uh we don't have teachers uh teaching assistants or grad assistants teaching classes again they may run a recitation period yeah, and i can echo that as well teaching. and uh, Marie, even though engineering is such a large school and we have so many students in any of our majors um our class sizes within the specific majors themselves um are usually quite small i mean that engineering processes class i referred to that almost all first year students take um, I think that class is limited to between 15 and 18 students. Um, so our labs and everything are quite small, even within larger classes as a first year student. And Chad can back this up if you're in a Calc 1 class or a Chem 1 or Physics 1 class. It might be large, uh, and that could be like 80 students, maybe 90 uh, for just the lecture portion. But then those classes are divided up into smaller recitation and mentor sections. And so it's you're not meeting in that large a class at all times. And then those are the lower level classes as you take a, a core engineering type courses in STEM. But then, as I said, the major classes could be 30 students, 40 students, um, you know, much, much smaller once you get into your major specific classes starting in about sophomore year. But even as a freshman, as I said, you'd be in that freshman class with 15 students. And as I'm sure Ben will talk about, the Haas classes are all quite small and all first year Haas classes are, are very small, very specifically for that reason and i'll i'll lead into ben on that one <laughs> that's a good good segue Marie. yeah ben you're up yeah thanks yeah i mean the, in the school of Haas, the majority of classes are under 20 uh students and that includes the most of the first year classes as well some of them are a little bit larger um uh, things like uh, some of the larger film history classes art history classes um uh, minds and machines is a, a very popular one that's, that's a little bit larger um introduction to economics classes like that but most of them are um are, are quite small and they're they tend to be very discussion based um and uh, presentation based and collaboration based dean douglas
And then Chad, what about your class sizes? Yeah, absolutely. So we, uh, and Marie uh, hinted at, at sort of where I was going, we certainly offer, you know, if you look at the, the face value, you'll see uh, chemistry one, you know, you'll see 300 students in the lecture, but we offered a multi-tiered support system uh, for these classes. So the lecture will be, uh, you know, which is a couple times a week is that. Uh, then we break it down, our laboratories, uh, you know, are about 15 to 20. And then we even go further than that. We offer, we offer uh, mentoring um, and not sort of, you know, really assigned mentoring. And those groups are about 10 students. So we, you know, so we have availability for everyone uh, to get that feedback. Uh, the, off the instructors have office hours. The graduate TAs have office hours. Um, we have uh, what we call near peer mentoring. Um, you know, if you go and look at sort of a lot of the research that really helps the students, they get a lot of valuable uh, feedback from that group. Uh, and so really we offer a lot of support. Um, Computer Science One, for example, I think has over 50 open office hours per week to help with assignments. So you, you, we really make sure that even if those introductory classes, and then just like all the other programs, they do get a lot smaller. Um, <laughs> yeah. as Sorry they about go that. Along. I don't know what happened. But, uh, just some of the uh, those anyway, introductory ones. Yeah, our class the, sizes, the large they're, sizes, they're usually less than 30, 30 or less. Clint, um, you're back. I'm glad. pretty much a hard limit of 40. Um, we don't go above, above no 40. Worries. All uh, taught by, uh, class by class. professors. Um, I, I want to say we have only one adjunct in the, uh, in the department. Um, so yeah, you get a good, good quality education. And well, and so one of our most popular classes is say like intro to management and, and we offer that and we get, you know, a flood of students from around campus that just want to, you know, stick their feet in the water on management. Um, but again, we limit those to 40, 40 students. So even though we have hundreds and hundreds of students signing up for that, we just offer different sections. Yeah, absolutely. And um, so thank thank you for that answer. And um, I want to hit these two areas before we, at least before we wrap up here. Uh, one, again, a lot of questions about our co-terminal program, our accelerated master's, particularly students who are yeah. interested in majoring in engineering, but then getting exactly. an MBA or something else <laughs> Actually, I uh, wish in I business. So I got is, some is formal education and, before um, I was I don't know, thrown to the wolves in as, business. As that's the transition you made um, in your career. But yeah, um, uh, those are actually some of my favorite best. students are the co-terms from, uh, from other majors. So yeah, very uh, robust program. We have it. You can get an MBA in three three additional semesters. Um, it's a it's a solid program. Anybody that's interested, I could uh, I think I think we have it all on the website, the curriculum and everything laid out. Uh, so it's a it's a tried and true pathway of of uh, finishing up in five five and a half ish years uh, to to get your undergrad degree uh, in anything across the campus, and then and then finish up and leave leave the school with an MBA. So. Uh, like I said, really good program. Uh, a lot of uh, I, I don't have the placement statistics uh, in my head, but uh, they, they always they always get jobs and good jobs. And I, I have I've got no complaints about the, the co-term MBA program. Yeah. Anyone else want to talk about co-term in general and maybe a little bit about, um, you know, can you go across schools? Can you go, you know, we talked about, you know, engineering and business, but could you go engineering to computer science or vice versa or something like that?
And I'll, yeah. And, oh, so I was just going to jump ahead. in. I was going to say one of the best. Sorry, Greg. Oh, go right. No, no you're first. Okay. So I was just going to jump in real quickly and talk about we've got uh, lots of duels because of the multidisciplinary aspect of our program. We've got concentrations, which will allow you to concentrate in various different areas whether it's Haas related or engineering related, science related, what have you, but then we also have duals. Computer science is probably our most popular, but right after that would be Haas, electronic media arts and what have you. We've got biomedical engineers that uh, do IT uh, duals, um, can concentrate in one or the other or do the duals. Uh, so they're very popular and they go across. We've had, uh, we've had folks from every school do duals with us. And one of the benefits of doing the co-term program that, that accelerated master's is you get to keep your undergraduate financial aid scholarship for that fifth year. Uh, so it makes and, that and master's Greg, a little bit more affordable, which is great. Prospective um, students so you should know that move... they don't have to yeah, commit if they want to do a co-term now, right? Um, you know, they don't even apply to that program until they've uh, completed 90 credits at RPI. So they can talk with their academic advisor about that, and they don't have to even choose and commit to that, um, you know, for a while. It's not something they need to know that they want to do right now. Yeah, it's a, it's a great point. Yeah, you, it's not something you apply for as an incoming freshman either. It's not like you note that you're applying for the mechanical engineering with a co-term in this. That's something you apply for once you're a, a student on campus. Usually, again, you're in your junior year or even in the beginning of your senior year. Um, this is a question that I definitely want to get to, and it's, it, I've gotten a lot of questions about co-ops and internships and things like that. Um, so can someone talk about you know, the co-op and internship possibilities and uh, opportunities that they know students have gotten? So any, that can leave that for anybody. I mean, I'm happy to talk about some of the internships. Yeah, go right uh, we've ahead. We've got yeah. we've got students that go to we've got students that actually have gotten internships now mm -hmm. as freshmen. Uh, so our students are going to uh, Microsoft has a new program that I worked with them a little bit on trying to get started for the, taking freshmen because what when the admin of Arch we won, we had students that wanted to get active much quicker. Johnson and Johnson is looking at our uh, freshmen now, and so they go to Johnson and Johnson, Deloitte, IBM. Microsoft, Google, Apple, Amazon, all of the companies that hire are hiring our students as interns. United Airlines is, is uh, recently uh, newer and they uh, take a lot of our students as well. Our program, because of the way it was structured, has always been tied to the idea of doing an internship or a co-op. And so we've structured our courses all along for years along the path of being able to let you graduate in the time frame that you need to and also take a co-op. Now with art, it fits perfectly into that paradigm.
Yeah, and, and I do want to hit one more question, at least one more question, because we are going to try to wrap up at about 140. Um, the Arch there is our unique junior year uh, for architects. It's, it's the third year uh, out of the five. Um, but uh, there's a full session on the Arch during this uh, during our fall open house today. So, uh, again, if you're not attending, it will be recorded, and it will be on the YouTube page in about a week or so. Um, so I do want to hit this one. I know Chad had hit on this earlier, but can you talk a little bit about the undergraduate research opportunities? Um, you know, and can, you know, we'll start with Chad, and if anyone else wants to hop in, uh, feel free. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, the undergraduate research program uh, is a huge part of, of what we do in science. Um, we actually are hosting a, a program for our incoming freshmen in a couple of weeks about how to get involved in research. We get this question all the time. How do I get involved? How do I get involved? Um, and, and really, as incoming freshmen, you know, you're not likely to get into a research group right away. Most of our students begin research in earnest uh, at the beginning of their sophomore year. It's probably the, the median time frame for our students. Um, because at that point, right, one of the things that, that faculty members are looking for is a little bit of background, right? If you're going into computational research, they want you to have a little bit of programming experience. If you're going into more lab, what we call wet lab experience, uh, oftentimes, we want you to take uh, some lab courses so you understand a little bit about lab safety, lab techniques. Um, that way, you can really help uh, the faculty member. Uh, so it's a really great opportunity. Uh, and there's so many types of research. If you go to the School of Science website, and actually, I think all, all the different schools, uh, if you actually click on the list of faculty, you'll see what they're interested in, right? what kinds of research are they working on. Uh, you'll see uh, papers that they've published recently. It's a really great uh, place to look for if you're like, hey, what kind of research are they doing? That's a great place to look. And then there are also research centers. Um, probably not as common for students to work with those uh, unless they're directly related to a faculty member but certainly lots of, of great research opportunities. And from a school uh, of engineering perspective, it's uh, yeah, no. research is huge for us. The URP program is huge. Um, probably have about 70% at least of our students participate at some point, Greg. Um, and you know, I you can go to the School of Engineering uh, website. We have a YouTube channel and there's a lot of different videos about all the different interesting research going on in the School of Engineering. If they look under accepted student celebration, we put up about 100 videos last spring uh, for that virtual celebration and those all of those can be viewed. Um, I'm a huge fan. For one thing, it dips your toe into research to see, am I an R&D kind of person if I go into industry? Or maybe, oh my God, am I a PhD kind of person that's going to stay and get a PhD? Um, and, and then if, if, if for no other reason, and this is from a very practical reason, um, you know, a lot of times our faculty's research and engineering can be funded by something like NASA or Boeing or something like that. And those faculty members can help students connect with those potential employers for internships, co-ops, jobs, things like that. I mean, you know, we have a faculty member who works with Boeing and you better believe that they're going to say, hey, who's good in your lab? You know, and you can, you know, and that faculty member can recommend those undergraduate research students. So on a very practical level, it's great. It also looks good on your resume to be able to say, I've done, I've done undergraduate research with this professor who is world known for their expertise in wind turbines or whatever it is. Um, and I think students and in engineering, many times you can use undergraduate research, you could do it for pay or for credit, and you can apply those credits to your actual degree requirements. In engineering, you can, re, you can usually apply those as technical electives within your major. So there's a ton of great options to explore with that. You can do research over the summer or part of your arch. Um, there's a lot of different um, ways to get involved in undergraduate research, and any of us will be happy to talk in detail with students about it. Huge fan and a really good thing to look at no matter where you end up choosing for school. Yeah, Richard. You so one last thing, Greg, I wanted, I wanted to say about the research, uh, and I know we have to move on, is the interdisciplinary aspect that, you know, we have computer science students who do research, uh, you know, in Haas, uh, in, in all the different disciplines, for example, uh, because you don't always have to do research. A lot of our uh, research, as Dean Douglas has said, is interdisciplinary in nature. Yeah, and Richard, yeah, I just want to add in. And then ben, I'll get to you, ben, you'll wrap okay, up. Okay, in addition, just some other research. We also have some student-organized things like RPI-SEC, 
which is one of the top uh, cybersecurity groups. They win national honors all the time. And that's a student run uh, organization that anybody can get involved with. Um, and it's guided by uh, faculty from ITWS and computer science. And then we have an ARCOS program, which you can read about and find out about as well, which is student projects that uh, often go off into the world to be real projects. Some are actually used at RPI. Uh, one of the other things that even with skills, faculty will often recommend that incoming freshmen wait at least a semester, if not that full year, just to get their feet wet and get deep into what RPI is and learn your way through school before you just take on the research, even though it is available and there are all those student run organizations as well, opportunities. Yeah, and then Ben, if you wanna wrap us up here, it'll be a perfect timing. Yeah, so just a last thought um, about the nature of research, which maybe loops you back to where I started um, initially about the, the overall um, the overall culture of intellectual inquiry. Um, so research means many different things across the school. So this can mean uh, funded uh, research from the National Science Foundation or the National Institutes of Health. Um, in a broader sense, it also means uh, the, the creation of new knowledge. It means inquiry um, into all of these different, um, all these different fields. In a practical sense, what that means in Haas is that if you're doing uh, research as an undergraduate student, you may be working on a faculty-led research project, but also means there's opportunities to pose your own questions um, and undertake your own research projects, which is you know, commonly how this would work you know, in the arts and graphic design um, and many other, uh, many other areas as well. So I'm gonna, I think I'll just leave you with that. Um, you know, thinking about, about research um, broadly as uh, intellectual and creative inquiry. Yeah, and I always like to highlight uh, Dr. Kurt Anderson, who's one of our associate deans of engineering. He's working on a project called Oscar, which is a, a micro satellite that's a space garbage man. And he's had over 80 undergraduate students work on that project, built from anywhere from building the satellite to the technology to find the space debris to bring it back safely to the Earth. So um, we, this is where we're going to wrap up. We do have to get everyone to the next session. I have put my email in the chat.